Hi, I'm Brad with Orbit. Today we're going to talk about determining how long to run your sprinkler system. If you've got a sprinkler system, you know one of the common challenges with it is knowing how long to run each sprinkler station. One of the common problems that people face is overwatering, the set it and forget it method. Turn it on in the spring, turn it off in the fall, run it every day in between for 15 minutes each station. While this is easy, it's not optimal. Your lawn has very different watering requirements at different times of year. Watering too shallow also promotes shallow root growth in your lawn and doesn't promote that deep, healthy root system, which provides for a more lush lawn. Today we're going to talk about fixing those problems, determining how long to run the sprinklers based on a catch cup test. This is a simple test you can perform at your home. Anyone can do it. It's so easy. All we're going to do is set these out in the lawn. We'll show you how to do this. And then we're going to take the values, the readings from the catch cup, Put it into the computer on wateringschedule.com, which is a simple calculator to use, and then we're going to hit calculate. What that's going to give you is an optimal runtime based on your zip code and your soil type. It will also show you some problem areas in the lawn, areas where the sprinklers aren't performing optimally, and areas where you can maybe take a look at fixing some of the issues that you have in your yard to help better the sprinkler system and optimize the system overall, provide better water coverage in your lawn. We're going to talk about these things right now. And we'll go ahead and start with talking about some of the head fixes that you may need to make before you perform the test. Before you begin your catch cup test, there are a few things you want to look at. You'll want to make sure that your heads are vertical, as close to straight up and down as, as you can get them, or perpendicular to the surface they're on if it's a sloped area. If they're not vertical and the head is tipped to the side, this side's going to get watered in close and this side out far. If it's tipped forward, the spray is going to go into the ground and isn't going to water the area it's supposed to cover. If you've got grass growing around the head that's preventing the spray from getting out of the nozzle, you'll want to remove that grass as well and make sure that the spray is unobstructed. Also look for things like rocks in the nozzles or interruptions in the spray pattern that you can eliminate and make sure that that head is covering optimally. Once you've fixed all the breaks in your heads, nozzle obstructions, cleared the grass away, you're ready to perform your catch cup test. You'll want to turn on your sprinklers to identify where your heads are located. Once the sprinklers are popped up, you can use sprinkler flags to mark their location, or you can start setting out your catch cups at this point. You'll want to set the catch cups out at least two feet from each head. Then you can shut the sprinklers off. Assembly of the stakes is very easy. Simply insert the tapered end into the stake, and the stake is complete. Then you can insert your catch cup into the holder. These are the measurements on the catch cup. The lines correspond with the number on the right side. Those numbers are measurements in milliliters. We've laid out our catch cups, as you can see, and we've put each catch cup two feet from the heads and then halfway in between each head in all directions. After you've got your catch cup laid out, you'll want to get a piece of paper and mark on that piece of paper where the catch cups are located. When you go back through and check the volume of water in each cup, you can then write it next to the location on the piece of paper. This will help you in determining where problem areas are in the yard where you might have head issues, nozzle issues, or other problems going on. Let's go ahead and run the test and get started. You can run your sprinklers for any number of minutes that you want. You'll need to know how many minutes it's been run so that you can enter that into the catch cup calculator. I went ahead and made a rough outline of the area we just watered. I marked the sprinkler heads with these circles and I'm going to mark the catch cups with an X at each catch cup location. After you've marked all the catch cups on your rough sketch, you'll want to go and measure all of the water in the catch cups. It's helpful to have a second person with you at this point. One to read the catch cup data, one to write it down on the paper. Each line on our catch cup represents five milliliters. In this case, we've got approximately between 60 and 65 milliliters. We'll mark that down as 63 on our paper. After you've recorded your catch cup, I go ahead and dump the water out so I don't record it a second time. After you've recorded the catch cup data on your sheet of paper, go to wateringschedule.com to enter the numbers you wrote down. Once you're on wateringschedule.com, click the Enter Results button. After you've clicked the Enter Results button, this is where you'll enter your zip code, select your soil type, and put in the number of minutes you ran the test for. 
After you've entered that information, this is where you'll enter the actual catch cup data you recorded. If you need more than 12 catch cups, click the Add More Catch Cups button. If you ran the test for multiple stations, at this point you can click Save and Next Station to enter the results from additional stations. If you don't have any additional stations to enter, hit the Calculate button to get the results. Here are the results from the data you entered. In the first part, you can see the uniformity of your system. This basically tells you that if you have any areas that aren't getting watered, that there are things you can do to correct those. For more information on how to improve the uniformity of your system, click the button under the Save More Water tab to the right. After your sprinkler efficiency is step one under your recommended sprinkler timer settings. First, you'll assign the stations that you recorded to a program on your timer. Generally, sprinkler timers have an A, B, and a C program. The key is to assign all of your lawn zones to the same program as you'll be watering them on the same days. Step two is the number of start times that the tool recommends. In this example, we have two recommended start times. This means that you will run all the stations two times. The delay in between start times is recommended to be at least 30 minutes. This is to allow time for the soil to absorb the water and not run off. In step three, you'll see the runtime for the stations that you've entered. In this example, we just have one station and a recommended runtime of eight minutes. The total recommended runtime with two start times and an eight minute runtime is 16 minutes per watering day. Below there, you'll see a schedule for each month of the year. This schedule recommends a watering interval based on your zip code that takes into account evapotranspiration data or ET data for your area. In this example, we can see that January, February, March, November, and December are all off. We should just turn our timer to off at that point. The other days have a varying interval. In other words, adjust the interval each month based on the recommended schedule provided. You can click the Print Results button to get the information printed out on your computer. Or you can click the Email Results button to have it emailed to an email address. If you have any further questions about programming your sprinkler timer, you can click the Timer Manuals button up top. This has manuals for orbit timers listed. If you have another manufacturer's timer, go to their website to find the appropriate manual for your timer. If you don't have the catch cups yet, you can click the Buy Now button to purchase them. The Orbit Catch Cups, along with WateringSchedule.com, are the perfect combination to help you save water, money, and have a greener lawn. For more tips, tricks, and informational videos, please visit us at OrbitOnline.com.